Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim is convolution associative. Let's do this through an example. Consider three discrete time signals: x1 of n, x2 of n, and x3 of n. x1 of n is the constant signal that is equal to one, so all the samples are equal to one at every instant of time. x2 of n is the discrete time delta, delta n minus delta of n minus one. So this signal at n equals zero, it is equal to one. And at n equals one, it is equal to minus one. And then the other samples are equal to zero. X three of n is the discrete time Heaviside unit step function. So this is one if n is greater than or equal to zero, and zero if n is strictly negative. So this signal is equal to one whenever the time index n is non-negative. Otherwise, it is equal to zero. Let's compute the convolution of x one and x two, and then. We take the result and convolve with x3 of n. So we start here by doing the convolution between the first and second signals. What is the convolution between these two signals? Graphically, if we take the signal x2 of n and then we time reverse it, whenever we multiply the signal by x1 of n, we will get two samples. One sample equal to one, the other equal to minus one. And when we sum, we get zero. So the convolution is equal to zero. If we write the expression, now this convolution will be summation m from minus infinity to infinity. X two of m, x one of n minus m. So x one of n minus m, this is always equal to one, and x two of m is delta m minus delta m minus one. Okay, and for this summation, you know, if we sum this signal, if we sum the samples, it is only equal to one when small n is equal to zero. So the sum will give one, and then. And this shifted discrete time delta, same thing. There is only one sample that is equal to one, and when we sum, we get one, and so we get zero. If we take the O0 signal and convolve it with the third signal, regardless of the third signal, basically we get zero. So this is the result of the convolution. If we do the convolution between x1 and x2 first, and then we proceed to convolve the result with x3. Now let's do x2 and x3 first. Okay, so now the operation that we will do is x1 of n, convolve it with x2 of n, convolve it with x3 of n. This convolution is done first, we get the result, and then we take this result and convolve with x1 of n. So we want to convolve these two signals. x2 of n convolved with x3 of n. So this is a summation. So here, let's write the convolution sum. So this will be x2 of m times x3 of n minus m. And we get a result that depends on n. This is equal to summation m from minus infinity to infinity. x2 of m will be delta of m minus delta of m minus one and x3 of n minus m that's the heavy side units the function u of n minus m if we take this with this now this discrete time delta of m this is only one when small m is equal to zero otherwise we have zero okay so the only surviving term in this summation will be when m is equal to zero the result will be u of n minus zero and if we take this guy with the heavy side units the function now delta m minus one is one only when m small m is equal to one and so the result will be the discrete time heavy side unit step function and now n minus one. So this is u of n minus u of n minus one. And this is delta n, right? Because u of n, we have unity samples starting from n equals zero. Here we have zeros and we have ones here. Now, u n minus one is a shifted signal to the right by one place. So we have ones here and then we have zeros there. If we subtract u n minus one from u n, then all the samples are equal except at n equals zero. In this signal, we have u of n, we have one, and from this signal, we have zero. So the result will be a signal that has only one sample equal to unity, which is at n equals zero, and the other samples are all equal to zero. So this convolution will give us the discrete prime delta. Okay, now let's convolve this signal, which is the result of convolving x2 and x3 with x1 of n. So now we will take x1 of n, x1 of n is uh, always equal to one. So now we take summation m from minus infinity to infinity, then we take delta m, and then x1 of n minus m, but this is always equal to one. And so when we sum, we sum the samples of the discrete time delta, and it is one at just one value, which is small m equal to zero, and so this summation is equal to one. So if we go back here, the result of this convolution is one. If we convolve x1 and x2 first, and then take the result and convolve with x3, we get zero. If we convolve x2 and x3 first, and then convolve with x1, we get one. And these two results are different. And this means that convolution is not associative. We can come up with many examples like this, and this is also applicable to continuous time signals. We can also come up with many examples in which it is clear that convolution is not associative.